Hi guys, this is the first of two videos in which we will define all the different types of weathering processes. In this video we will just look at the different types of physical weathering. In the second part of this set of videos we will then have a look at chemical weathering and biological weathering. In the previous video we had a look at how clastic sedimentary rock forms and this process requires the weathering and erosion of rock to produce the sediment in the first place. So, keeping this in mind, we will now be looking at the various types of weathering which occurs to produce this sediment or detrius. So firstly, just to define weathering. Weathering is a process which breaks up solid rock and eventually transforms it into sediment or chunks of rock called clasts or detrius. Rock that hasn't undergone weathering is called fresh rock. Weathering, as I said, includes physical weathering, chemical weathering, or biological weathering. Physical weathering, which is sometimes referred to as mechanical weathering, is when rock is broken up by mechanical forces. These mechanical forces include abrasion, jointing, frost wedging, root wedging, salt wedging, thermal expansion, and animal activity. I will be explaining all of these mechanical forces in this video. Once the weathering has occurred, we end up with detrius, and this detrius is collected through gravity and the forces of wind and water. Large detrius will collect at the bottom of a hill where it is broken off, and this is called talus. Here we can see talus at the bottom of this hill where weathering is taking place. Small detrius can actually be carried along by water or wind down streams or through the ocean, and this smaller detrius is often called sediment. The first type of physical weathering we'll look at is abrasion. Abrasion is the wearing down of rock as it is transported. Abrasion occurs in rivers and glaciers most commonly. In rivers where the, high, where the river is flowing quite quickly and rocks are carried and bump up against each other, sharp edges of the rocks are worn down forming quite round pebbles. This is why we find round pebbles on the banks of rivers. Glaciers cause abrasion as the heavy ice sheets flow downhill, they scrape along the bottom of the bedrock and abrade the bedrock. The next type of physical weathering is jointing. Joints are natural cracks which occur through solid rock. These cracks form because initially all rock is deep in the crust, under high temperature and pressure and covered by a lot of overburden. But this overburden is slowly removed and eroded away and the rock rises up in the crust and the pressure upon the rock is removed. This removal of pressure from the underlying rock means the rock is able to expand and this makes the rock fracture. Joints allow for accelerated chemical weathering as the joints open up the rock and provide more surface area for chemical weathering to occur, but I'll go further into detail on this later. Exfoliation is another type of physical weathering. Exfoliation is the separation of a successive thin sheets of rock from an exposed massive rock. For example, plutons which form deep in the earth as one massive rock can rise to the surface of the earth and are often affected by exfoliation. Exfoliation occurs because the rock which is under pressure at depth is exposed and this removal of pressure causes the expansion of the rock and this causes fractures which run parallel to the surface of the rock. Along these fractures, the rock separates and the thin shelves just fall off. Now we'll talk about frost wedging, root wedging and salt wedging. So frost wedging occurs when water seeps into the joints of a rock. So we know that when water freezes, it expands. So if we can imagine, liquid water has infiltrated the joints in a piece of solid rock during the day when it is nice and hot, but then night falls and it is so cold that the water freezes and expands. This expansion then forces the crack wider apart, causing a larger opening in the rock. This will then be worse than the next night when the same thing will happen again. This repetitive freeze-thaw cycle can cause boulders to break off cliff faces and can speed up the pace of weathering. Frost wedging is very similar to the processes of root wedging and salt wedging. Root wedging occurs when roots grow into the joints of a rock and expand them. Salt wedging occurs when salt, which is dissolved in the groundwater, precipitates out and crystals grow. 
These crystals can grow within the grains of the rock and pushes the grains apart, weakening the rock. Another type of physical weathering is thermal expansion. Thermal expansion occurs because the sun will heat the outside edges of the rock, while the inside of the rock will remain quite cold because it is not touched by the sun. The outside layer therefore expands while the inside remains constant. This causes a crack forming parallel to the surface of the rock. Here we can see those cracks forming. And the last type of physical weathering I will mention is animal activity. Animal activity includes the burrowing and breaking down of rock. So that's it for this video on physical weathering. In the next video of this set we will talk about chemical weathering and biological weathering.